understood. Well, after the my previous session on geo schemes, Carlos and I spent like 45 minutes talking about clean core and species information. So I don't think he's gonna learn much. But nevertheless, we'll go through it. So uh, Steve, shall we start the, the view of us? Or yes. shall we wait? I don't know. I, I would say go ahead and start and uh, you know we'll see who else shows up. If there's like an introduction or whatever. Well, it's, I mean, it's just a, the usual uh, introduction to any first group. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Um, this is the, the session on the task group Lian Corp which is a, a task group of the Species Information Interest Group. My name is Paco Pando. I am based in Royal Botanical Garden, Madrid, Spain, and also the node manager for the Spanish EBIP node. And, and the, the convener of this task group. Lian Cor, I just uh, will deliver a very short introduction to what it is, um, what is the intention and what is the status of this and, and then we can move on where we are, where we want to move forward. Lian Core is a, a data specification to describe and to exchange uh, species level information. By species level information, we, we refer not only to the biological features of the species, meaning description, images, distribution, common names, but also, well, common names are not biological features, but also to not biological features such as uh, legislation or uh, conservation plans or things like that. Um, Pliancor started as a joint initiative between the, the Costa Rican INVIO and the Spanish GB node more than a decade ago. Since then, uh, a number of, of people. I will share the, the screen just to, to provide some background information on this. At the, at the same time, I am speaking. So um, in, in these years, so we have been uh, developing and refining the, the scheme. Uh, we have, I mean, the, the data specification. We have gone through different phases in, in, the, in the final stages. The standard has been expressed as a XDS, X, X, D, XSD file, such as the one I'm showing here, in which the unit is the data set. Then we have, I'll make this a bit bigger if I can. Then the data set is made of uh, taxon records, and for each taxon, and then we have a metadata nomenclature classification, descriptions, everything related to natural history, such as life form, life cycle, reproduction, invasiveness, habitat distribution, uses, management, conservation. So it's more or less a, a comprehensive uh, standard regarding species information. Plian Core is um, a standard that has been in use. This is the, the space of the task group in the data we GitHub. I'll put the, the link here. And as I was saying, it has been implemented in a number of countries and at different levels, I mean, project levels. And in Spain, for instance, is the, the standard specification for the, for the Ministry of Environment has been implemented in Mexico, in Colombia, and here is a, a number of, of, of cases. So we might say it is a, a pretty mature uh, standard. It has improved, it has been refined. 
There are some interesting developments associated with the standard, for instance, uh, let's see. Oops, sorry. For one of the, well, actually the Ministry of Environment in, in, in Spain, uh, an underlying uh, ontology was uh, developed and supported and on, on this ontology, uh, a data species species repository based on, on this ontology and RDF with a sparkling point. So in certain aspects is pretty, pretty well developed. But then the, the SDS specification, which is the data with specification for expressing standards was developed and approved and shall be followed. And for us, the for us meaning the European core core group, the challenge was to make this fairly complex, fairly elaborate structure found in the in the XSD into something much more simple such as an SDS file such as this in the in the Sofia meeting of uh, Tavik earlier uh, or last month actually I I presented uh, well the, the the status and the situation with uh, with the Korean core and uh, the issues that we were facing for instance the the um, what is happening with the intermediate levels in the X uh, in the hierarchical schema? What sh shall we do with the with the multiple uh, appearances of, of terms? How we refer to other standards that are uh, utilized within Plan Core? Anyway, a number of of, of issues that um, basically. Um, uh, they're synthesized into how to make something very complex into something fairly simple. Nevertheless, we, we reach that, that level. We are able to produce SDS files. In this process, uh, Steve Vasco um, have helped a, a lot. And we are almost in the position to, to present this SDS file to, to follow the, the uh, procedure for the, the public review. And uh, with this, I, I, I'll stop and I might take, we might take questions and suggestions. In, in this session, it is also Wien Ulate from Missouri Botanical Garden, who is member of the, of the core group of, of the Pian Corps, who can also attend or respond to your questions and suggestions. So with this, I, I stop and we open the discussion to all of you. Questions, suggestions, comments? So do you, um, I know that you guys had been talking with the ABCD um, group about this strategy for um, including the X path as a yes. value to a property. So how, how are you feeling about that? Do you feel like that's pretty well worked out in your case? Technically, it it works in, let's see, maybe William. Oh, sorry, I'm going to share the screen. Sorry, I stopped sharing. Let's see if we might see some, well, here is the way the X path as a reference to the XML schema file is presented. And when a term is used more than, for instance, here, more than once, then we have the, the X path to, to both elements. So it, it, it works well, but 
as it is now, it, the X path equivalent is restricted to the plian core uh, schema. And since uh, plian core reduces quite a number of terms from other schemas, that information is, is missing. So for instance, um, the measures or facts of Darwin core is, is used a number of times in, in plian core that is missing totally in the XDS, the SDS. So technically it works, but uh, from the, the point of view of, of usability, we're not sure if that is enough. And if we move into the, the other schemas from the other standards, then it gets very big. And then also we run into the issue that some of these schemas are not longer used by these standards. So, so there are so um, I, just to make sure I'm understanding. So the like, is there an import of these other schemas, like a Darwin Core XML schema or something like that? And then the and those are what you're not picking up then, yeah. right? Or or are those Darwin Core terms? like used within a part of the structure of the main Plinian core XSD or not? I guess yes, not. They, they are used, but the definitions are outside the, the schema, the Plinian core schema. Uh, so there's an issue of the, the definition and then another issue of like how they fall within the record structure, uh, for, right? For instance, uh, uh, I'm sharing my screen, <clears throat> yes. So here we have uh, reproduction. Um, we have a level which is reproduction atomized, and reproduction atomized uh, reduces the Darwin core measure of facts. So, all this is totally missing in the, in the XDS, in the SDS. And if we, we move here, let's see, go to the Then we move into the, the Darwin, uh, Darwin core schema, which is the Darwin, Darwin core extensions scheme. So all that is left out in the SDS, as it is now. Okay. And we use elements from EML, uh, Dublin Core, Darwin Core, Taxon Consistency Schema, ABCD. So Plian Core reduces, we thought, following with good practices, other uh, elements from other schemas. Paco? Yes. And, and I want to add something. Uh, so, so the way we've come in terms with it is that sometimes, if you look at the SDS document, it's the definition of the terms that Plinian Core is actually doing. So not having those is not a problem because they are defining somewhere else. Now, it is a problem if, you, if, you, if we keep thinking, as, as we were, about the whole structure of the of the standard in terms of the X, XSD, where we have all this um, uh, complexity and, and all these uh, um, looping or, or uh, uh, aggregation of terms coming from other places. So in a sense, yes, the SDS document defines the ones that Click is using. Uh, we need to check on those boundaries that, that uh, Paco mentioned, like uh, we have uh, synonyms, which is, which is only uh, a, a name that we call the scientific name. It, at the end, the definition is a scientific name, and that's what it is, and scientific name borrowed from somewhere else, but it, we call it synonyms. So if we wanted to show there, um, how, do we, how do we handle it there? It's, it's a little, um, uh, it's a little delicate. Uh, synonym name is at the end, yeah, a scientific name, see, a TCS scientific name, and that's what it is. 
So we're not creating that. We're just renaming it using it with a name. And that's a label that we put on the on the element. So maybe this we will want to keep, probably or not, because we're renaming them and using differently. Um, but in reality, not having things that are already defined somewhere else, it's okay in, in, if we're looking at definition of terms. If you're trying to understand the whole um, uh, standard, then that's where, and, and I know we, did, we talked with this with, um, um, with Steve, then it's the XD, XSD, the one that gives all that complexity and all that integration of, of terms. So as a requirement for Padwig to have the SD, SDS documentation uh, done, we, we should, I guess, I think we should have the PLIC elements, the premium core elements that we are minting, that we're defining, those should be there. Those are the ones that we really need to be there. But the rest is already I defined somewhere else. Now, again, another boundary is, well, yes, but some of those that should be schemas or standards somewhere else are not even there. So they're not available. They, so that's what Pablo, uh, what the, sorry, what Paco mentioned about, hey, we're, we're bringing some things into our definitions because they're not, they can't find, be found where they should be found right now. And, and we're using them. So that's, that's another thing that we have faced and where we have to deal with um, because throughout time, you know, we, we keep losing um, access to some of the things that we borrow from some other standards. Yeah, I was just uh, ag gonna agree with what you said. Actually, I was gonna say what, what you just said, which is I don't think it's Plenty and Core's problem to define uh, other people's terms if you're borrowing them. I think I think that what you have right now, I mean, the issue is if somebody's looking at your schema and they see a Darwin Core term, well, they know what that means because it's defined in Darwin Core. But if they see a Plinian Core term, they don't know what it means in terms of like a definition and, and you fix that problem. So I think, I think I totally agree. I think you're good there. Um, what are the, so you mentioned TCS. Um, what are the terms that you're borrowing that are not like, um, you know, where the definitions or whatever have disappeared? Because I do think, you know, when we, um, th there was a question about what should happen to the Tadwig ontologies and, and those did get archived in GitHub, even though they're not like, you know, anything ratified, they should be findable. What, what are the other, aside from like, TCS, what are the other ones that you're concerned about? Uh, well, I don't have the list into the documentation, but it's, it's about five. It's EML and the GBF extension, it is uh, Dublin Core, do, do Darwin Core, Dublin Core, uh, TCS, and EOL, I think. So I think the Dublin I'm, I'm Core decent. and Darwin Core. Yeah. Dublin Core and Darwin Core are fine. Um, and I don't know about EOL. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so and what what I mean what we do, let's see if I yeah, the EOL is, is that something that is, you know, reliably <clears throat> deposited somewhere? I mean, is that the issue that, you know, you can't reference it? Uh, let's see. So, just a sec. Yeah, so, right. I would say yes. Uh, and, and one of the ways that we did was we move all those i think to the github right yeah uh, there, the there, there, there they are ml darwin no a dublin that sorry darwin content i don't remember which one is this but anyway these these are the the, the schemas 
that were not longer available in the original locations. And uh, well, about the and, and in your here, master yeah. schema, or I'm I'm not really an XML person, but like you, here, here you are. say. It, all, all these, I don't know if you can read them, but all, all the imports. Mm -hmm. ABCD. And the imports. TCS. And the imports. Gisin, Darwin Core, Dublin Core. Yeah. Those are the. And the import. This, yeah. Sorry, I was just going to say in the import statements, then that, does that tell that? Um, software, how to retrieve it from your GitHub repository? Is that how it operates? Uh, well, be, because the way the, the the XML schemas work, if you provide a, a location, a URL, then uh, the schema retrieves the elements that they are used. So you don't need to do anything special about that. They validate and they work fine in that way. The problem is when the the, the schema is stop being available in the original location, and then you you make a local copy just to to maintain the the validity of the schema. So from the standpoint of the machine readable schemas, everything is good. Yep. It's then I guess just the issue. That there may be some terms that don't have a human readable definition anywhere, right? <laughs> XSD is human readable. Yeah, <laughs> we can read it. Well, it's human readable. I mean, I guess if you have, if that was the idea, I've just seen, I've just seen XSDs that have element names and no information. I don't. That may just be A B C D. I haven't actually looked at this, but I mean, I guess if the if that they're documented with definitions in the XSD, then maybe that's good enough, and maybe it's just not your problem that the these other ones have been abandoned. If they were abandoned, then I would see. It seems to me that that you have you would be, you know being responsible whatever to um you know co-opt those definitions you know you can credit them where appropriate but if mm -hmm. there's nobody maintaining them um you know if it's if it serves your purpose and um to to bring them into to plenty and core does anybody object to that In, in a way, is what we do. I mean, uh, for instance, the Dublin Core, mm -hmm. they, they work fine in the regional locations. But for the others, we, we make the, the local copy in the plan in the, well, this is, this is available in the TCS place, but but others uh, have to be moved into the, the plan core repository just to, to maintain the, the validity of the schema. Mm -hmm. Well, I was thinking, you know, actually just, you know, wholesale copying them in and making them plenty in core terms, so to speak, you know, changing the namespace. And you know, just imp yeah. no, not importing them by reference, but importing them by copy, so to speak, and changing the paths and all the rest of that, so that you, you know, um, I mean, I, I don't know, it, six of one, half dozen of the other. I mean, you're in in some sense making them Tadwig standards by by copy, you know. Yeah, but 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 then um, I mean the the whole idea of reducing elements is defeated right? well at least there's somebody who's responsible for you know 
maintaining them, asserting some sort of ownership. Yeah, but, but in, in some cases that is true. In some cases, they are just terms that are, are not longer maintained by, by anyone. But in other cases, it's because the, the standard move out from XST. being defined as, as the schemas. Uh, hmm. Oh, I see. OK. Hmm. So the, the, the term exists in, in, the, in the standard, and the standard is maintained, but not longer as, a, as an XML schema. For, for instance, Darwin Core. Uh, OK. Yeah, OK. Hmm. Well, it seems to me like this, it, it, this isn't really a problem. I mean, if you've got, if you have all the XML schemas available somewhere, it doesn't really matter whether they're available in their original location as long as you can import them. It seems like the only issue is, do can people find what they mean? Can people find some kind of definitions? And I think as long as you have some kind of solution for that, um, it seems like you're good to go. I don't, I don't, I'm just trying to think of what it, what it is that you still need to do to be done, and I'm not sure there is anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good news. <laughs> but the, okay, then let's say that uh, our concern is when we present this for the public review, is this going to be good enough? Or oh, then people start saying, okay, but this is missing or this is not clear or where is this coming from or that is where we are now. Yeah. Probably, yes. I would say the no that notion of okay, what does the SDS covers and what does the XSD gives that is not in the SDS documentation, that notion has to be understood when you're going to go and look here for, oh, wait, but here's not, um, I don't know, some Darwin core term. Yeah, I mean, there, there is no measure of facts in It's not going to be core. And, and all the measurement of facts that we're using are not going to be here. Um, but, they're in the, but they're in the XSD, of course, because the XSD is using other namespaces and integrated and everything. As long as, as, as somebody understands that, yeah. then yes, it's, it's easier. But... Uh, and it's just a matter of, of, of knowing what, why things are not here when, when they should be. Um, I, we've, we've checked and we still have to do probably a last check of everything that's in the XSD is here and or needs, the needs in the XSD that needs to be here is here and everything here comes from the XSD and I guess that's as far as we can look for things. We yeah. got the expats for everything that click defines and all the expats start in data set, which is the root element in the XSD. Um, so we know where they are located. Um, there are not as many as we thought there were because we initially were starting at any, any element and then we realized, no, no, we're given the location of these term inside the XSD and therefore we have to start in the data set and, and show where it's located. Um, so it really reduces the, the number of permutations that we were doing there showing all the routes. For example, in, in here in full description, we were looking at, oh yeah, data, this could start from data set, but it could also, you can find it from tax and record or tax and description or full, no, no, no. The idea is just to show in the whole XSD where it's located, not necessarily uh, if you're in tax on record or in other any of those where the the term is located, and so that reduced the number of equivalent expats that we were showing, and it, it turned into a manageable amount of them. I think we so I mean in terms of yep, sorry. go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say in terms of the the question, like you know, is this is this going to be good enough? I mean, I think if the task group thinks it's good enough, then they submit it to the executive committee. <laughs> yes, and but, the, yes, but. The, mm -hmm. <laughs> but, is, but we don't, I mean, I think William uh, was spot on 
when he was saying, it's, a, it's an issue of expectations, what the users are expecting out of the SDS. And because we don't know, I mean, the plea and court task group, we don't know what it is expected of the SDS. We are moving in this kind of, of limbo and going back and forward all the time. No, but, but we also learn ourselves I, that, that to manage that expectation and say, okay, so what is the SDS really for? What should it define? And that allows us to kind of clarify what we were looking for. That's why we can say, oh yeah, well, and, and we had to go back and forth. I mean, it's not as easy. We, we went back and forth. Oh no, add them. No, no, take them out. No, no, wait, add them. No, 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 take them out. Um, because the, the, the XSD has a lot of, it has types in within um, defined. So, so those are just, you know, uh, uh, abstract, um, aggregations at the end. Oh yeah, it has to be there. No, no, it doesn't need to be there. We're minting the terms, the final leaves of the whole tree. Those are the ones that have to be there. Um, how they are grouped in, in very particular ways. That's part of the, 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 the XSD that we're doing, the standard we're doing in, in, in pre court with the XSD. And that was a great recommendation actually by Steve. Focus on those terms and and try to, to get them down. Maybe we need a, a disclaimer at the top of it. Here you will find only PN core terms, despite the standard use of the, that the specification uses many other terms from other standards. Just to manage. Yeah, I think you just need to have a clear, you know, there's a like preamble section at the top of this document where you explain what the document means. And I just think all the stuff you're just saying, say that, <laughs> you know, in the, um, there should be, you know, section, yeah, okay. So actually, if you go down there, it starts with section 3.1. So what we just need to do is to go into the header template and add section one. You can look at like some of the other um, list of terms documents, it's, you know, they have like section one is, use of RFC um, keywords and, but they all have a, like an introductory section that basically explains like wh what is the purpose of this document, what parts of it are normative and, and all these things that you're just explaining, put that in the top of the document. And it should be, you know, if you do that well, it should be self-explanatory. Got it, yes, that's right, that's right. Everything before 3.1. We're missing that. Yeah, as, as it is now, we set the, the scope of the standard, but not the scope of the document. Yeah, good point. So it seems, again, I'm just trying to be optimistic here. It seems like if you can do that clearly and explain that, you know, for humans who want to know what the terms mean, look here, and for applications here's how you get to the here's the schema and then you know submit that to the executive committee and i mean i know that there is an interest in recommending potential review managers but but technically that's the executive committee's problem i mean obviously it makes it easier if you have some suggestions but um but technically it's not your problem it's the executive committee's problem <laughs> and then they are and then they find expert reviewers and you know if the expert reviewers thinks that this isn't good enough they'll come back to you and tell you why they think that's true so i, I would just say be bold <laughs> and you know put in the documentation you need to and go for it Thank you. This is very useful. I don't think anybody can say you haven't made a good faith effort to comply with all of these things. Steve, what's your thinking about um, where this draft should be located? Uh, it looks to me like this is in Manuel Vargas's. Yeah. GitHub repo. Um, 
should we be migrating it into the Tedwig space before review? Of course. I yeah, guess. I think so. Um, I mean, you guys have a GitHub repository, right? There's a plenty yeah. and core one. I would just I would just copy it over there. I mean, ultimately, the the way this has played out with the other standards is the um, all of the underlying metadata ends up in that rs.tadwig.org repository, the, all the tables that have all the metadata in it. But the actual like software for generating these pages and everything like that's really in the hands of the maintenance group. And so, you know, Darwin Core, Audubon Core have in their GitHub repositories, the, the scripts which pull the data from the rs.tadwig dot org repository but then build the documents in their own repository and then and and the uh standards documents live in there because it's you know it's the maintenance group's job to maintain that right so i think in the end this stuff that you're prototyping in a different repository just needs to go into the um the Pliny and Core GitHub repository. And then at some point, you know, when, I, I don't think it's necessary to have all the styling and everything exactly right before ratification, but at the point at which it gets ratified, then <clears throat> somebody like Peter Desmet or whatever would get the, um, the um, GitHub pages template operating properly so that it you know gets the tadwood styling and that sort of thing so that's sort of yeah. how it's played out with the other standards yeah the thing that i'm concerned about is um issues issue tracking having a record of what goes on in review um being available um you know more permanently so to speak and and predictably in, in the tadwick space So yeah, I, I would encourage you to migrate this stuff over. I'm not sure how, um, I think John Vichorek had, had done some repo copying, whatever, <laughs> um, with, the, with the chronometric extension or something like that. And I think, you know, there's a, there's a lot of uh, sort of gymnastics involved with that if you're trying to preserve um, issue structure and things like that. So I, I would say the sooner the better to, you know, you, you might be leaving some things behind, but, uh, you know, getting- Do you in. have issues in your, in, uh, I mean, the Pliny and Core repository is there and it has four issues in it. Are there issues living somewhere else or is it just that oh. the, the actual yeah, files is, and is software need to be moved? Okay, cool. No okay. Progress, uh, yeah. Yeah, progress. <laughs> um, no, as soon as, uh, as we get this, uh, maybe, maybe reviewed, we could ask uh, Tim to, to publish the uh, extensions. Because the IPT extensions are right now are locked under uh, test mode, and that that stops any any real usage, any any production usage of the uh, of the standard in from the IPT point of view. I guess that would open up to a lot of users. And oh yeah, implementations. Hmm. So who's only test users are able to access it now? What's the deal with that? Now the IPT, any IPT that you have to put the IPT in in mode in, in test mode. Therefore, you mm -hmm. can't publish it. So you 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 can go and access the the IPT as a uh, well. It's it, it only access as a test mode in test mode. 
Uh, you can publish it out outside. Okay. What we do so is, nobody nobody can harvest. Right. So what we do is we uh, we create the Darwin core, we put it somewhere and use it manually um, in order for someone to just publish their data, their species data in in, in Plinian core, and therefore from there having harvesters uh, see it, having networks integrated um, would be through the IPT um, extensions. Yeah, but is that a decision of Tadwick or is that a decision of Gibbeth? No, Gibbeth, uh, Gibbeth, but, but Tim already said that as soon as we have this on the track to... Okay. The track to... Then, uh, Another reason for us to move quickly on this. Yes. What, what, so explain again, what did Tim say? So he, he said, because of the experience with extensions, that he might want to, um, we might want to wait until Plinian Core is approved in Tadwig to move the extensions of IPT, Plinian extensions of IPT, from test mode into production. Yeah, it seemed to me that if you think you've got um, stable and ready for any sort of an implementation, um, all you need is a caveat that this is, you know, still draft. But right. um, getting user experience would be quite valuable. Yeah. or implementer experience, so to speak, whatever. All good. Camila had a... Yeah, hi, yes, I, I think we should talk again with Tim because I, I have attended in some of these other meetings and I see that there's not, there are a lot, most of the extension actually are not being gone through that week. So I think, and we are doing a very organized process. So I think we should talk with Tim again because I there is not a clear documentation from the side of GV or how these extensions enter um, the IPT. And I think we are a group that is res responding for these extensions. So yeah, I think we should talk again with him and to reconsider because this has been in draft like for four years already. I can help with some of the things to incorporate. So I'm now going through the recover the previous description types that were developed in GBIF and handle appropriately. And this is something that I was talking uh, with Paco before, um, after the previous give scheme meeting. And uh, there is a frequent confusion that I see popping up there. And it's the, the usual confusion of a, a specimen uh, or species profile extension and the species profile model. And those are two different things. And there are landing pages in, in DB for that. So I'm going to write a comment on the Dart thread and then um, so that you can have the links. But uh, William already linked to that, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so. Yeah, I will just put the, the relevant links in, in one comment. So uh, what William uh, put as a description type was the is the equivalent to the former species profile model and not the extension. So we will basically have to look into both of them. So into look into the extension documentation and into the model documentation, which are different, and then rescue and, and map as many terms as possible. And what uh, Scratchpads uses for species level data is the model, and it gets exported into GBIF. So I'm, I'm using it places. Yeah. So I can contribute to solving that issue. Yeah, any, any comments? You have been very quiet. You're intimidating everything. <laughs> this. No, I mean, I have not much explored this, but I wanted to basically clearly understand what's happening here. That's one of the reasons I'm here today. 
So yeah, I was thinking of using parts of it, but yeah, sometime I'll give it a short and let you know my comments for sure. Yeah, but one thing that we say about this data specification is it is like a menu. You mm -hmm. need you, you choose what you need. Yes, it's not a matter of actually... impl implementing the whole thing. It's never intended for that. I was I was thinking like some of the work that I've done with distributions or trades, whether this will be the right thing to kind of put those data sets through this to kind of make sure that people don't have to download it from somewhere and try to understand what's happening. If it's according to a particular standard, then anyone downloads can like immediately start making sense out of it. I was thinking in those terms, so I'll definitely take a look. Okay, then, then as Stan said, we're making progress. Uh, we, we need to implement what we have been discussing here. By the way, Stan, we missed you in Sofia. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Wasn't quite feeling ready to travel. <laughs> okay, anything else? Well, then, thank you very much. And hopefully, we will see some real progress in the SDS and the process in submitting it to the executive person. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Adios. Adios. Hello.